Hello viewers, in this video we are going to talk about the betweenness centrality of a node. Betweenness centrality helps to evaluate the importance of a node based on the fact that how much information flows through this node. So if a node occurs to be in the shortest paths of most of the other pairs of nodes, then that node is very important because whenever those two nodes communicate, they have to communicate through this node. So in terms of information flow, the importance of a node is calculated through betweenness centrality. We are going to calculate it with the help of an example graph. So before we continue, let's write down the formula for betweenness centrality. For any node i, betweenness centrality can be calculated as summation of j not equal to k so we are going to pass through all pairs of nodes calling them j and k where they must not be the same node so this is inequality that j should not be equal to k or in other words the two nodes for which we are finding the shortest path must not be the same node this is the shortest path between j and k that has the node i in them and this is the shortest paths that we have between j and k. So it's the summation of shortest paths of all nodes that has the node i divided by the sum of all shortest paths of all other pairs of nodes ignoring the node i. Now let's just evaluate it for an example graph. So if we have this graph, let's say we have node a b c d e and we have these edges between them okay so in order to calculate the betweenness centrality for node a we first need to find out all the nodes that are having a path between them if two nodes do not have a path between them, we may just simply ignore those nodes. So the betweenness centrality of node A is going to be the sum of all pairs of nodes that are having shortest paths and whether it has A. So in order to make sure that we don't miss any of these pairs, so let's just write them down. And again, I repeat, we have to ignore the node A. So we can have the shortest path between B and C and since it's an undirected graph so we don't need to evaluate it for the shortest path from C to B because obviously that is going to be the same then B to D and B to E C to D and C to E and then finally D to E so these are all the pairs of nodes that are going to be helpful in calculating the betweenness centrality for the node a. Now let's just find out the shortest path between C and between B and C. So the shortest path between B and C is this one. It has just one shortest path having, having one hop. So the shortest path between B and C is 1 and it does not include A so it's going to be 0 by 1. It does not include A so we have 0 over here because this considers all the shortest paths between J and K that has the node I in it. I in our case is A, so we have a total of one shortest path between B and C and that does not contain the node A. So it's going to be 0 by 1. Plus, now you'll have to go look for this one, B and D. So again, the shortest path between B and D is this one. It's one hop, so we have just one shortest path between B and D and that does not have A in it. So it's going to be 0 divided by 1. The shortest paths between B and E. So now we have multiple shortest paths and the shortest path between B and E can be this one. So this is one shortest path and this is another shortest path. They both have the cost of 2. There isn't any other, in fact we have a third one also and that is from B to C 
and then from C to E. So all these three paths are the shortest paths. They all have a cost of two. So we basically have three shortest paths between B and E and A happens to be in one of them. That is B A E and it does not occur in the other two shortest paths. So it's going to be one by three. Now we have to calculate it for C to D. So C to D again we have just one shortest path and it does not contain A so it's going to be 0 by 1 and for C to E we have again this one shortest path and that does not contain A so it's again 0 by 1 and for D to E we have just one shortest path and it does not contain A so that will be another 0 by 1 so if we add that up it's 0 plus 0 plus so it's basically 1 by 3 so this is the between the centrality of the node A apart from this value everything else is 0 and this is basically the between the centrality for node A let's just calculate it for one more node so the between the centrality So if we have to calculate the between the centrality for the node, let's say D. So all the pairs of nodes that we have to consider are A to B, A to C, A to E, B to C, B to D, and B to E. Oh, sorry, we have to ignore D. So it's going to be B to E, C to E, and that's it. So these are all the pairs that we have to that we have to consider. So now looking for the shortest path between A and B, we have this shortest path between A and B, and it does not contain D. So it's going to be zero by one plus the shortest path between A and C. So we have this shortest path between A and C which is A, B, C and then we have this shortest path also from A to E and E to C. So we have two shortest paths between A and C and they both do not contain D. So it's going to be 0 by 2 plus from A to E we have this shortest path that does not contain D so it's 0 by 1 plus from B to C this is the shortest path and it does not contain D so it's again 0 by 1 plus B to E so B to E has this path that is through A then this is also the shortest path having two cost or two hops that is B D E and then we can go through B C and E as well so from B to E there are three shortest paths they all have a cost of two so there are three shortest paths and D happens to be in one of them plus the shortest path between C and E. C and E again can be directly connected through this edge uh, so they have a cost of one and D does not happens to be in this path so it's zero by one. So these are all the values and again this is the only non-zero value so the between the centrality of node D is also 1 by 3. So that's how we can calculate the between the centrality of an undirected graph. Now if the graph is directed everything remains to be the same however we have to be careful that the paths that we are following must be through the directed edges and therefore we have to look for nodes that cannot be reached from another node and we can simply ignore those nodes. So now we'll just redraw this graph and add some directions to it. So we have A, B, C, D, E. And this time we are going to have some directions on these edges. So some of the edges may be bidirectional.
So we have added directions to all the edges and now we can calculate the between the centrality for this directed graph. Let's say if you want to calculate it for the node B. So again we'll have to write down all the pairs of nodes in order not to miss on them. So the pairs are A to C, A to D, A to E, B to, uh, sorry we do not have to consider B, so then C to D and C to E and then D to E. So these are all the possible node pairs that we have to look to. So A to C. From A we can go to B then D and then C. So this is one way of getting to C that has a cost of 3. Let's see if we have another shortest path. From A we can go to E, D and E and then from A we can go to E and we can go to C. So basically this is the shortest path that is having two hops. That is from A to E and then from E to C. So this is the only shortest path. All the other paths have a cost higher than this. This is the only path that has a cost of 2. It does not contain B so it's going to be 0 by 1. For A to D we can go from A to D that is through E and we can do the same through B also. So there are two shortest paths from A to D and B happens to be in one of them. So this is 1 by 2 plus A to E. So from A to E we have only one shortest path and B is not part of it. Now C to D. From C we have to go to B and then D. So this is one shortest path. In fact this is the only shortest path. So there is only one shortest path and B is part of it. Then C to E. From C to E uh, we have to go through B, D. Uh, sorry we cannot go through that path. In fact from C we cannot reach E and this is what I wanted you to be careful about so there is no path from C to E so we can simply ignore this or even if we introduce some smoothing value that is still not going to have any effect on how we differentiate between nodes based on their between the centrality so just ignoring this pair of node is not going to make any difference so just to have reduced computational cost we can simply get rid of it because as you can see from here we do not have any path that could take us from C to the node E. Now from D to E again from D to E again we do not have any shortest path so we can just simply ignore this pair also. So the between the centrality score for the node B is 1 by 2 plus 1 which is going to be 1.5. So this is the between the centrality for the node B when the graph is directed and that's how we can calculate between the centrality. The between the centrality formula that we are using is introduced somewhere around 1970s. There are other variants of it so this isn't the only way how between the centrality can be calculated. So keep watching and let me know if you want me to make more videos on such related topics. This video also was requested by some of the viewers that the previous video on between the centrality was too short and we skipped many in between steps so therefore this one is more detailed and is going to help you to calculate between the centrality for your crafts. Thanks for watching.